John Ellis Jeb Bush born February 11, 1953, is an American politician who served as the 43rd governor of Florida from 1999 to 2007. Bush, who grew up in Houston, is the second son of former President George H. W. Bush and former First Lady Barbara Bush, and a younger brother of former President George W. Bush. He graduated from Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts, and attended the University of Texas, where he earned a degree in Latin American affairs. In 1980, he moved to Florida and pursued a career in real estate development, and in 1986 became Florida's Secretary of Commerce until 1988. At that time, he joined his father's successful campaign for the presidency. In 1994, Bush made his first run for office, losing the election for governor by less than two percentage points to the incumbent Lawton Chiles. Bush ran again in 1998 and defeated Lieutenant Governor Buddy McKay with 55% of the vote. He ran for re-election in 2002, defeating Bill McBride and winning with 56%, to become Florida's first two-term Republican governor. During his eight years as governor, Bush pushed an ambitious Everglades conservation plan, supported caps for medical malpractice litigation, launched a Medicaid privatization pilot program, and instituted reforms to the state education system, including the issuance of vouchers and promoting school choice. Bush announced his presidential candidacy on June 15, 2015. He suspended his campaign on February 20, 2016, shortly after the South Carolina primary and endorsed Senator Ted Cruz on March 23, 2016. Bush later made headlines by joining a group of Republicans who opposed the GOP nominee for president, Donald Trump. Early life Jeb Bush was born on February 11, 1953 in Midland, Texas. When he was six years old, the family relocated to the Tanglewood neighborhood of Houston, Texas. The nickname, Jeb, is composed of his initials J.E.B. John Ellis Bush. He grew up with two younger brothers, Neil and Marvin, one younger sister, Dorothy, one older brother, George, who is seven years older, and, for the first ten months of his life, an older sister, Robin. Jeb Bush initially attended Grady Elementary School in Houston. Following in the footsteps of his father and older brother George, at the age of 14 years in late 1967, Bush began attending high school at the Andover, Massachusetts boarding school Phillips Academy, Andover. Bush completed ninth grade in Houston, but was advised to repeat it at Andover, and was nearly expelled due to poor grades. Bush recreationally used marijuana, hashish, and cigarettes during his high school years, although he made the honor roll by the end of his senior year and served as captain of the tennis team. At the age of 17, Bush taught English as a second language and assisted in the building of a school in Ibarilla, a small village outside of Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico, as part of Andover's Student Exchange Summer Program. While in Mexico, he met his future wife, Columba Garnica Gallo. Bush, who had largely avoided criticizing or supporting the Vietnam War, registered for the draft after his graduation from high school in 1971. In the fourth and final draft lottery drawing, on February 2, 1972, for men born in 1953 and to be inducted during 1973, Bush received a draft number of 26 on a calendar based scale that went to 365. But no new draft orders were issued after 1972, because the U.S. changed to an all-volunteer military beginning in 1973. Though many in his family had attended Yale University, Bush chose to attend the University of Texas at Austin, beginning in September 1971. He played on the Texas Longhorns varsity tennis team in 1973. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa and Magna Cum Laude from the University of Texas at Austin with a B.A. in Latin American Studies. He completed his coursework in two and a half years. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Business career before entering politics. In 1974, Bush went to work in an entry-level position in the international division of Texas Commerce Bank, which was founded by the family of James Baker. In November 1977, he was sent to Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, to open a new operation for the bank, where he served as branch manager and vice president. Following the 1980 presidential election, Bush and his family moved to Miami-Dade County, Florida. 
He took a job in real estate with Armando Cadena, a 32-year-old Cuban immigrant and self-made millionaire. Cadena had made a fortune in a computer business, and then formed a new company, the Cadena Group, to pursue opportunities in real estate. During his time with the company, Bush focused on finding tenants for commercial developments. Kadena eventually made Bush his partner in a new development business, which quickly became one of South Florida's leading real estate development firms. As a partner, Bush received 40% of the firm's profits. In 1983, Bush said of his move from Houston to Miami, On the personal side, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were already living here. On the professional side, I want to be very wealthy, and I'll be glad to tell you when I've accomplished that goal. During Bush's years in Miami, he was involved in many different entrepreneurial pursuits, including working for a mobile phone company, serving on the board of a Norwegian-owned company that sold fire equipment to the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System, becoming a minority owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, buying a shoe company that sold footwear in Panama, and getting involved in a project selling water pumps in Nigeria. Miguel Riqueri, who ran International Medical Centers IMC, employed Bush as a real estate consultant and paid him a $75,000 fee for finding the company a new location, although the move never took place. Bush did, however, lobby the Reagan administration vigorously and successfully on behalf of Riqueri and IMC. <laughs> Early political career Bush volunteered for his father's campaigns in 1980 and 1988. During the 1980 campaign, Bush worked as an unpaid volunteer, and expressed great admiration for his father. In the mid-1980s, Bush got his start in Florida politics as the chairman of the Dade County Republican Party. Dade County played an important role in the 1986 election of Bob Martinez to the governor's office. In return, Martinez appointed Bush as Florida's Secretary of Commerce. He served in that role in 1987 and 1988, before resigning to work on his father's presidential campaign. Bush frequently communicated with his father's staff from 1981 through 1992. The younger Bush recommended Dexter Leitonen for the post of U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida and set up a meeting between the Bush administration and Motorola. He also advocated for Cuban exiles living in South Florida, and supported the Cuban embargo. In 1990, Bush urged his father to pardon Orlando Bosch, a Cuban exile who had been convicted of firing a rocket into a Polish ship which was on passage to Cuba. Bosch was released from prison and granted residency in the U.S. in 1989. Bush was the campaign manager of Ileana Rose Leitonen, the first Cuban American to serve in Congress, in her special election. In 1994, Bush launched an unsuccessful bid for the governor's office against incumbent Democratic Governor Lawton Chiles. Bush ran that year as a conservative. At one point, he was asked what he would do for African Americans, and Bush responded, It's time to strive for a society where there's equality of opportunity, not equality of results. So I'm going to answer your question by saying, probably nothing. Bush lost the election by only 63,940 votes out of 4,206,076 that were cast for the major party candidates 2,135,008, 51% to 2,071,068, 49%. In the same election year, his older brother, George, was elected governor of Texas. Following his election loss, Bush joined the board of the Heritage Foundation and continued to work with Kadena Partners. Alongside T. William Fair, the president of the Urban League's Miami affiliate, Bush helped to establish Florida's first charter school. <laughs> <laughs> Governor of Florida Bush ran again for governor in 1998, defeating Democrat Buddy McKay, who was lieutenant governor. Bush ran for re-election in 2002 to become Florida's first two-term Republican governor. During his eight years as governor, Bush was credited with initiating environmental improvements, such as conservation in the Everglades, supporting caps for medical malpractice litigation, moving Medicaid recipients to private systems, and instituting reforms to the state education system, including the issuance of vouchers and promoting school choice. Bush was governor when his brother George won an intensely fought election recount in Florida to become president. Bush recused himself from any official role in the recount. 
1998 gubernatorial election In 1998, Bush defeated his Democratic opponent, Lieutenant Governor Buddy McKay, by over 418,000 votes 2,191,105, 55% to 1,673,000. In 2000, to become Governor of Florida. He campaigned as a "...consensus-building pragmatist." Simultaneously, his brother, George W. Bush won a re-election victory for a second term as governor of Texas, and they became the first siblings to govern two states simultaneously since Nelson and Winthrop Rockefeller governed New York and Arkansas from 1967 to 1971. In the 1998 election, Bush garnered 61% of the Hispanic vote and 14% of the African American vote. Economic policy While governor, Bush presided over a state government that reduced taxes by $19 billion and he vetoed $2 billion in new spending, according to the Wall Street Journal. An analysis conducted by economist Martin Sullivan, which eliminated the effects of the federal estate tax repeal which did not require legislative action to go into effect and inflation, estimated the cumulative reduction in taxes by the state at closer to $13 billion during Bush's tenure, resulting in tax savings by 2006 of $140 per person, per year. A substantial amount of the tax savings in the higher estimate came from the phasing out of the federal estate tax law implemented in 2001 under President George W. Bush. For a total tax savings of $848 million per year, Jeb Bush did not push for a replacement with a state tax. The biggest reduction in taxes was due to the elimination of the state's intangible personal property tax, which applied to holdings of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and money market funds. During Bush's tenure, the state also increased its reserves from $1.3 billion to $9.8 billion, which coincided with Florida receiving the highest possible bond rating for the first time. According to Kurt Wenner, VP of Research at Florida Tax Watch, Bush was governor during one of the strongest revenue periods for the state of Florida, due in part to the boom in property values, so that revenue grew despite the tax cuts he implemented. Bush reduced the state's government workforce by 11%. In May 2006, as part of a $448.7 million line-item veto of state funding, he cut a total of $5.8 million in grants to public libraries, pilot projects for library homework help and web-based high school texts, and funding for a joint-use library in Tampa. As governor of Florida, Bush received grades of B in 2000, A in 2002, B in 2004, and C in 2006 from the Cato Institute, a libertarian think tank, in their biennial Fiscal Policy Report Card on America's Governors. Topic: Education Policy. Bush's administration emphasized public education reform. His A+ plan established heightened standards, required testing of all students, and graded all Florida schools. From 1998 to 2005, reading scores of fourth grade students in Florida on the National Assessment of Educational Progress increased 11 points, compared to 2.5 points nationally, according to the Maine Heritage Policy Center, a conservative think tank which opposes standardized testing. Bush has been a proponent of school vouchers and charter schools, especially in areas of the state with failing public schools, although to date very few schools have received failing grades from the state. He established the McKay Scholarship Program which provides vouchers for students with learning disabilities to attend a school of their choice. He also established the A-plus Opportunity Scholarship Program which provided vouchers to students. This program was struck down by the Florida Supreme Court in 2006. Bush helped create the Corporate Income Tax Credit Scholarship which provides corporations with tax credits for donations to scholarship funding organizations. Those organizations must spend 100% of the donations on scholarships for low income students. Bush declined to raise taxes for education, which led him to oppose a ballot initiative to amend the Florida Constitution so as to cap growing school class sizes. Bush said he had a couple of devious plans if this thing passes. Despite his opposition, the amendment passed. In higher education, Bush approved three new medical schools during his tenure and also put forth the One Florida. 
proposal, an initiative that had the effect of ending affirmative action admissions programs at state universities. These moves were among the concerns that led to the faculty of the University of Florida to deny Bush an honorary degree, while the University of Florida Alumni Association made him an honorary alumnus. <laughs> Health policy As governor, Bush proposed and passed into law major reform to the medical liability system. The Florida Senate, a majority of which were Republican, opposed Bush's proposed caps on non-economic damages for injury and wrongful death. Bush insisted, and called the legislature into five special sessions. The contentious debate even included a senior Bush staffer calling for primary opposition to Republicans who disagreed with the governor on the reforms. Eventually, the legislature agreed to the caps and Bush's reforms passed. In 2014, after Bush left office, the Florida Supreme Court ruled the damage cap, the centerpiece of the 2003 legislation that Bush had pushed for, to be a violation of the state constitution's Equal Protection Clause, discriminating against those who are most grievously injured, those who sustain the greatest damage and loss, and multiple claimants. Bush passed a reform to Florida's Medicaid system that moved recipients into private managed care systems. Bush was involved in the Terry Schiavo case, involving a woman with massive brain damage, who was on a feeding tube for over 15 years, and whose husband and legal guardian, Michael Schiavo, wished to remove the tube. This move was opposed by Terry Schiavo's parents in the courts. Bush signed Terry's Law. Legislation passed by the Florida legislature that authorized him, as governor, to keep Schiavo on life support. The law was ruled unconstitutional by the Florida Supreme Court on September 23, 2004. That decision was appealed to the federal courts. On January 24, 2005, the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear the case, thus allowing the Florida court's ruling to stand. While governor of Florida, Bush was opposed to abortion. He supported a law requiring parental notification for teen abortions and requested that the courts appoint a guardian for the unborn child of a mentally disabled woman who had been raped. Choose Life, a pro-life advocacy group based in Ocala, Florida, submitted a specialty license plate application—previously vetoed by Governor Lawton Chiles—which passed both houses and was signed into law by Bush on June 8, 1999. Other policies Bush signed legislation to restore the Everglades in 2000 as part of an $8 billion project in conjunction with the federal government. He also set aside over 1 million acres of land for conservation as part of a land purchase program. In 2001, Bush eliminated civil service protection for over 16,000 state jobs, which had the effect of making it easier to fire employees in those positions. In addition, he issued an executive order which removed racial preferences in state contracting. In 2004, Bush supported an unsuccessful bill to allow illegal immigrants to be issued driver's licenses by the state. Bush supported more than a dozen new protections for gun owners. In 2005, Bush signed into law Florida's Stand Your Ground law, which was the first such state law in the United States. Bush is an advocate of capital punishment, and 21 prisoners were executed during his term. After the execution of Ángel Nieves Díaz was seemingly botched, the execution took 37 minutes to complete, and required a second injection of the lethal chemicals. He suspended all executions in Florida on December 15, 2006. During Bush's tenure, the racial and gender diversity of the state's judicial bench increased. However, according to the Wall Street Journal, Democrats criticized some of Bush's judicial appointments as being overtly partisan and political. Topic. Veto of high-speed rail and other vetoes Bush often used the line-item veto to limit state spending. He exercised his veto to stop other legislation as well, such as a bill about parenting coordinators. In 1995, the Florida State Legislature created the High Speed Rail Authority HSRA and came up with a public-private partnership model. Government would build the system leveraging state dollars with federal funds and tax-free bonding. The private sector was to invest money in the project, help design and build the network, and be given the franchise to operate the trains known as Design Build Maintain Operate, or DBOM. 
Trains would be privately owned, similar to how the airline industry operates in a publicly financed airport. The rail system and its planning was estimated to cost $7 to $8 billion. The Florida HSRA and the Florida Department of Transportation FDOT reached an agreement with a consortium that included the Fluor Corporation and Bombardier Transportation. The consortium agreed to invest $300 million and utilize the DBOM functionality. The state of Florida would float state bonds, and FDOT would commit $70 million annually increasing 3% yearly to account for inflation to service the bonds for the next 30 years. Federal monies would pay for the interest on the bonds, and the state monies would satisfy the principal. When the high speed railroad was running, operating surpluses would also be applied to the debt. The high speed rail project nearly came to fruition until Bush became governor in 1999 and ended the project his second day in office, stating that the venture posed too much risk and cost for Florida taxpayers. State legislators reacted by adding the project on the 2000 ballot as a constitutional amendment which was ultimately passed by voters. The amendment directed Bush and legislature to start building the railroad system by 2003. Bush vetoed funding for both the project and the board, and led a high-profile campaign to repeal the constitutional requirement that mandated the construction of the high-speed system. Voters repealed the constitutional amendment. Many who voted believed they were supporting the train, though in fact a yes vote was to approve the repeal. FDOT spokesperson Nazi Hadda commented that the rhetoric was inflammatory and misleading. It was really exaggerating tactics that were used to defeat this. The financing and the project were sound. It really squandered a great opportunity for this state. Other public officials stated that Bush's underhanded tactics were emblematic of his willingness to protect moneyed interests, including developers, energy producers and highway builders, who opposed a shift toward mass transit and helped fund the repeal effort. It's that arrogance of kind of the 1%, said Orlando transportation engineer Ian Lockwood. <laughs> 2002 gubernatorial re-election Bush was unopposed in the 2002 Republican gubernatorial primary, and in the general election he faced Democratic challenger Bill McBride. They met for two debates, in the most expensive Florida gubernatorial election yet. Voting went smoothly. Bush defeated McBride 56% to 43%, a greater margin of victory than in 1998. Bush won 44% of the state's Jewish vote in the 2002 race. Bush also won the white female vote in the swing voting battleground of Central Florida's I-4 corridor. However, he was not able to replicate the same success with African American voters like he had earlier in 1998, winning only 8% of the African American vote. He became the first Republican governor of Florida to win re-election. 2000. Impact on political party According to political scientist Susan McManus from the University of South Florida, "...in Florida, Bush is still perceived as conservative, especially on fiscal issues and even on social issues." Outside of Florida, fellow Republican leaders throughout the country have sought Bush's aid both on and off the campaign trail. Bush's out-of-state campaign visits include Kentucky, where Republican challenger Ernie Fletcher appeared with Bush and won that state's governorship in 2003, ending a 32-year streak of Democratic governors. In the first few months of 2014, Bush campaigned for New Mexico Governor Susana Martinez, Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval, Senator Lamar Alexander 10, and David Jolly who won a special congressional election in Florida. Bush has been criticized by some in the Tea Party as not being sufficiently conservative, as he supports positions on immigration and Common Core that are unpopular with some conservatives. Bush publicly criticized the National Republican Party for its adherence to an orthodoxy that doesn't allow for disagreement." On June 11, 2012. In comments shared with Bloomberg View, Bush suggested that former Republican presidents Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush would "...have had a hard time." Finding support in the contemporary GOP, in October 2013, Bush called for passage of immigration reform. In April 2014, Bush said of illegal immigration, it's an act of love. 
It's an act of commitment to your family. I honestly think that that is a different kind of crime. There should be a price paid, but it shouldn't rile people up that people are actually coming to this country to provide for their families. Topic: <laughs> Political interests. From 2004 to 2007, Bush served as a board member for the National Assessment Governing Board (NAGB). Created by Congress, the board's purpose is to establish policy on reports examining K-12 students' academic progress in America's public and private schools. Since then Bush's Education Foundation has advocated for the Common Core State Standards Initiative. In October 2013, referring to opponents of the standards, Bush said that while "...criticisms and conspiracy theories are easy attention grabbers." He instead wanted to hear their solutions to the problems in American education. In May 2006, Bush was approached to become the next commissioner of the National Football League. The outgoing commissioner, Paul Taliabu, was searching for replacements. In response, Bush said on May 24, 2006, that, I'm governor of the state of Florida and I intend to be governor until I leave which is January 2007. Roger Goodell eventually became the new NFL commissioner. In April 2013, Bush authored a cover story for Newsmax magazine, warning that America's entitlement system risked collapse unless there was a course correction in U.S. public policy. Bush touted a six-point plan that addressed taxes, education, immigration, energy, regulatory policy, and the family unit. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Business activities. According to Fox Business, Bush earned nearly half of the $29 million he earned between 2007 and when he decided to run for Republican presidential nomination in December 2014. From Wall Street banks and companies, in April 2007, Bush joined Tenet Healthcare's board of directors. The following August, Bush joined investment bank, Lehman Brothers, as an advisor in its private equity group. Bush has also served on the board of Innovita, Swisher Hygiene, and Rayonier and has served as an advisor to Barclays. Bush would later return $270,000 in consultancy fees he had been paid by Innovita after they declared bankruptcy. As of 2014, Bush had received more than $2 million from his work for Tenet, a company that expected to receive $100 million in new earnings in 2014 because of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act and that aggressively encouraged Americans to sign up for insurance under the program." Bush has reportedly objected to the ACA at company meetings, but has kept his personal views separate from what is best for Tenet. Bush owns several international stocks. <laughs> 2016 presidential campaign Bush had been considered a potential candidate in the 2016 presidential election since the end of the 2012 election. On October 2, 2014, George W. Bush said that his brother wants to be president. On December 16, 2014, Bush announced via Facebook that he would be actively exploring a 2016 run to become President of the United States and at the end of the year resigned several corporate boards. In February 2015, Bush released several thousand emails from his time as governor online. Most of the emails are in the public record under Florida's Sunshine Laws. However, Bush created controversy by releasing some emails that included some personal details such as social security numbers, names, and addresses, as well as the contents of the messages. Bush's campaign team subsequently redacted the personal information. By extending the exploration mode of his potential candidacy to a six-month period his scheduled announcement came one day short of six months into his exploratory phase, Bush used his time to get acquainted with the press, court donors, and prepare a strategy. In doing this, he navigated several campaign finance laws which limit donations and prohibit coordination with super PACs. In May 2015, it was reported that Bush had been raising money since January 2015, estimated to be close to $100 million, for his super PAC, Right to Rise. Bush announced his candidacy on June 15, 2015, at a multicultural campus of Miami Dade College. According to Reuters, Bush characterized himself as a moderate Republican who still has conservative principles. He promised immigration reform, spoke fluent Spanish, mentioned his wife's Mexican origins, and criticized Hillary Clinton. 
David Yepsen, director of the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute, said, "...it's pretty hard for Republicans to win the White House if current Hispanic voting trends continue. Bush has some unique abilities to appeal to those voters and he's going to maximize them." After a series of poor results in Iowa and New Hampshire, Bush spent his remaining money and campaign effort on the South Carolina primary. He placed fourth with under 8% of the vote. That night, Bush suspended his campaign, ending his presidential bid, and subsequently endorsed Texas Senator Ted Cruz. In an analysis of what went wrong, Politico argues that, his slow, awkward stumble from August through October encapsulates everything that caused the operation viewed as Jeb, Inc., to fail. Bush was on the wrong side of the most galvanizing issues for Republican primary voters, he himself was a rusty and maladroit campaigner and his campaign was riven by internal disagreements and a crippling fear that left them paralyzed and unable to react to Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Political positions Bush has addressed myriad political issues over the course of his career, many of them during his governorship as already described. In conjunction with his 2015 bid for the presidency, he has revisited many issues that he addressed before, as well as discussing many new ones. Domestic issues Bush believes abortions should only be legal in the case of rape or incest or if the life of the mother is in danger. He does not support public funding for abortion clinics. Bush has questioned the scientific opinion on climate change, while stating, I think global warming may be real. And, it is not unanimous among scientists that it is disproportionately man made. What I get a little tired of on the left is this idea that somehow science has decided all this so you can't have a view. National Journal wrote that Bush does not acknowledge the scientific consensus that human activity drives climate change. Bush supports offshore drilling outside of Florida. He says that he supports the Keystone XL oil pipeline as well as fracking. According to his spokeswoman, as governor he worked to strike a balance between our nation's energy needs and the economic and environmental interests of Florida. He believes states should have a role in decisions that impact their coastline. Expanding domestic energy production is key to ensuring America's energy security. Bush favors repealing the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act ACA or Obamacare and replacing it with a market-oriented alternative. Bush has called the current law a monstrosity that is flawed to its core. Bush has proposed some sort of state or local government funded catastrophic coverage system, in which, if you have a hardship that goes way beyond your means of paying for it, the government is there or an entity is there to help you deal with that. After the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the ACA in King v. Burwell in June 2015, Bush stated that the decision was not the end of the fight. Against the law, in 2015, Bush took the position that people in the United States illegally should have a path to legal status, but not a path to citizenship, and said that legal status and avoiding deportation should require immigrants to pay fines, get work permits, pay taxes, not receive government assistance, learn English, and not commit crimes. He supports tougher enforcement of immigration laws, including prosecution of businesses that try to hire illegal aliens. Bush, an opponent of same sex marriage, disagreed with the Obergefell v. Hodges Supreme Court decision and believes that the issue should be decided by the states rather than by the federal government and that it is not a constitutional right. He holds that businesses should have the right to refuse to provide services for same sex couples on religious grounds. In July 2015, Bush said he supported lifting the military's ban on allowing transgender people to openly serve in the military, so long as the military's comfortable with this, and it did not impact morale. Overall, Bush is for expanding gun owners' rights. Bush admitted smoking marijuana in his teenage years. Forty years ago I smoked marijuana and I admitted it, said Bush. I'm sure other people did it and didn't want to admit it in front of 40 million people. He also agreed that his decision to take marijuana was stupid and wrong. Bush believes each state should be allowed to decide whether it is appropriate to legalize marijuana or not. Bush opposes net neutrality. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Economic issues. Bush supports a decrease in capital gains taxes and property taxes. He supports cutting taxes for all Americans and believes they do better with less government interference. Bush also is a supporter of welfare restrictions. He supports the following, a four-year limit of benefits, a requirement that able-bodied recipients participate in work-related activities in order to receive benefits, and limiting benefits given to recipients if they have additional children while on welfare. Bush favors gradually raising the retirement age i.e., the age for collecting Social Security retirement benefits from 65 to 68 or 70. Bush is a frequent critic of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act of 2010. 10. Topic: <inaudible> International Relations and Security. In May 2015, Bush stated that he would have ordered the 2003 invasion of Iraq had he been president at the time. I would have authorized the invasion and so would have Hillary Clinton just to remind everybody. And so would almost everybody that was confronted with the intelligence they got. He also indicated that the lack of focus on post-invasion security was a mistake. He later stated that, Knowing what we know now, I would not have engaged. I would not have gone into Iraq, he said. He also argued that the invasion, though perhaps inspired by faulty intelligence, had been beneficial, saying the world was significantly safer. Without Saddam Hussein in power, in 2015, Bush said that he does not support a further major commitment of U.S. troops in Iraq to fight the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIS or ISIL, saying that such a deployment is not needed to defeat ISIS. He has not, however, ruled out such a deployment in the future. Bush favors building a new U.S. base in Iraq's Al-Anbar province, and has said that some U.S. troops ought to be embedded with Iraqi armed forces to help train them and identify targets as Joint Terminal Attack Controllers JTACs. Bush has not commented on adding to the approximately 3,500 U.S. troops in Iraq now. In a speech, Bush said his brother, former President George W. Bush, was his main advisor on policy with the Middle East. Bush later clarified that he was referring to policy on Israel, rather than on the Middle East as a whole. Bush supports the continued collection of metadata of phone calls by the National Security Agency. He also supports the USA Patriot Act, and criticized efforts by Senator Rand Paul and others to stop its reauthorization. Bush stated that Paul was wrong about the Patriot Act and stated that the Patriot Act has kept us safe, plain and simple. The metadata program has kept us safe, plain and simple. There's been no violation of civil liberties. Bush has called for increased military spending, expressing the belief that 2.5% of GDP is an insufficient amount. Bush has called the April 2015 Iran nuclear deal framework a horrific deal and said he would likely terminate any final agreement should he become president. He has argued that the deal would put Iran into a position where it could intimidate the Middle East. Bush condemned the July 2015 final nuclear agreement between Iran and the P5 plus 1 world powers, calling it appeasement. However, Bush stated that he would not seek to revoke the agreement on his first day in office. Topic civic and charitable activities After losing a 1994 election for governor of Florida against Lawton Chiles, Bush pursued policy and charitable interests. He volunteered time to assist the Miami Children's Hospital, the United Way of Dade County and the Dade County Homeless Trust. Bush served from 2012 to 2015 as co-chair of the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy. He has also worked with the James Madison Institute, JMI, a free market public policy think tank based in Tallahassee, Florida. He helped the institute in numerous ways and still has his think tank working in conjunction with it. In June 2008, Bush's Foundation for Excellence in Education partnered with JMI to hold a summit called Excellence in Action, a national summit on education reform. In 1996, the Foundation for Florida's Future published a book that Bush had co written, Profiles in Character, ISBN 0 1, a clear parallel to John F. Kennedy's 1955 book Profiles in Courage. The foundation also published and distributed policy papers, such as A New Lease on Learning, Florida's First Charter School, which Bush co-wrote. 
Bush subsequently wrote the foreword to another book, published by the Conservative Heritage Foundation and written by Nina Shokrai Rees, School Choice 2000, What's Happening in the States ISBN Bush co-founded the first charter school in the state of Florida, Liberty City Charter School, a grades K-6 elementary school, in a Miami neighborhood that, in 1980, was the site of the first major race riot since the civil rights era. The school's co-founder, working alongside Bush, was T. Willard Fair, a local black activist and head of the Greater Miami Urban League. The Liberty City Charter School was closed in 2008 after falling more than $1 million in debt. In 2000, Bush established the Points of Light program to recognize an exemplary volunteer, organization, or person. Bush is the honorary chairman of the annual AT&T Jeb Bush Florida Golf Classic, a fundraiser that benefits the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. He first became involved in the benefit after meeting with committee member Lawson Dutton, whose child suffered from cystic fibrosis. Supporters raised more than $722,000 in 2014 at the 19th annual Jeb Bush Florida Classic, exceeding their goals in attendance and revenues raised. Since the event's inception 19 years ago, the total revenue netted has reached over $7.478 million. Topic. Personal life In the city of Leon, Mexico, where he was teaching English during 1970 as part of a foreign exchange program, Bush met Columba Garnica Gallo. They were married on February 23, 1974, in Austin, Texas. As of 2014, the family residence is in Coral Gables, Florida. Bush is fluent in Spanish. The Bushes have three children. George Prescott, born April 24, 1976, in Texas, went to Gulliver Preparatory School, studied at Rice University, and earned a Juris Doctor degree from the University of Texas School of Law. In the 2014 election, he was elected commissioner of the Texas General Land Office. Noel Lucila Bush, born 1977, is his only daughter. In November 2015, while campaigning in New Hampshire, Bush detailed Noel's struggles with drug abuse. His other son, Jeb Bush Jr., born 1983, who attended Bowles School, works for a Miami, Florida, commercial real estate firm. Bush has four grandchildren, two through his elder son, and two through his younger son. In 1995, Bush converted from Episcopalianism to Roman Catholicism. In 2004, he became a fourth-degree Knight of Columbus. Bush, a member of Father Hugan Council 3521 in Tallahassee, has joined the Father Hugan Assembly. In April 2018, upon Mother Barbara Bush's death, Bush delivered a eulogy on behalf of the family at her funeral. Electoral <inaudible> <inaudible> history <inaudible> 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 Topic Bibliography Bush, Jeb, Yablonsky, Brian 1996. Profiles in Character. Foundation for Florida's Future. ISBN 978-0965091206. Bollock, Clint, Bush, Jeb 2013. Immigration Wars, Forging an American Solution. New York, Simon & Schuster. ISBN 978-1476713465. See also Bush family Republican Party presidential candidates, 2016